Okay, so now that we've seen the three main pieces of our strategy to implementing a calendar, the next question is how do we get all of the days in a month? Now, we're gonna be using the moment library for this again, so let's start off by importing that and we'll take a look at the answer to that question. So let's say import moment from moment. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by creating a function here called get days in month. Now the way this is gonna work, right? The way that this function is gonna work is it's actually just going to take a moment object representing the month we wanna get all the days for. Okay, so we'll say month moment. And what it's gonna do is it's going to use that month moment to figure out what month we're looking at and what year we're looking at because the exact number of days and the days of the week that those days occur on are gonna be different depending on you know the, the month and year of this moment that we're looking at here. Now, first things first, you might be wondering what a moment is, right? And how this library actually works. Well, for that, what I'm gonna do is open up a terminal here. I'm going to type node, which will open up a node terminal. And we should be able to load the moment library by saying const moment equals require moment. Okay, this will give us a good opportunity here to just play around with this moment thing for a little while. So first of all, moment, when you create a new moment, which you can do by just calling moment with parentheses after it, what that creates is a moment that represents the exact instant that you created this moment at in the code. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much how the date object works in JavaScript. If you just create a new date, by default, if you haven't passed anything as arguments, it's going to represent the exact instant that you, you know, created that date object in your code. Okay, so anyway, as you can see, this moment object that we just created by calling the moment function uh, basically contains the year, the month, the date, the time, and I believe even the milliseconds uh, at the end of that. And yours might be in a different order depending on you know what country you're in. It gets formatted differently. That's part of the moment library. But essentially, that's how we create a new moment that represents right now, right? If we want to actually print out a moment and you know uh, format it in a specific way, there's lots of different ways you can format dates. What you can do is you can say moment, okay, so you create it and then you call a function called format on the end of it. And to this function, you pass a string that represents the exact format you're looking for. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to print it out in the typical way that we do it here in the US uh, with the month first, the date after, and the year afterward. Okay, so what that's gonna look like, we're gonna say, month month slash day day slash year 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 okay so that will print out let's say 0902 2021 something like that okay as you can see so this format function allows us to print it out however we want and that's going to be very useful when we want to actually display uh, a given moment in our react code right inside our jsx now let's say that we want to create a moment that doesn't represent the exact instant that that piece of code was run. The way we can do that is by saying moment and passing two arguments to it. The first argument is gonna be a string representing the date that we want this moment to represent. So let's say that we wanted to find 9 12 1999. The way we would do that is 9 12 1999. And the second argument that we pass basically tells moment how to parse this first string that we passed, okay? So it's gonna be something very similar to what we did when we formatted it uh, in the first place. In our case here, we're displaying the month, the date, and the year. So we would just tell moment it's formatted month, month, day, day, year, 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 okay? And we can see that that's created that moment for us. And by default, if we don't provide any kind of time, the moment starts at the first second of that day. Okay, so generally when we create moment objects, we'll wanna actually assign them to something. So let's say const a long 
time ago equals moment. Okay, we can see that a long time ago is now that moment that we created. Now let's say that we want to just get an individual piece of that moment, right? Let's say that we just want to get the month or maybe we just want to get the date or maybe we just want to get the year. The way we do that is by saying a long time ago dot month. Okay, so that's how we would get the month there. And that's going to return the zero indexed month. So even though the month here is nine, uh, right? Because it starts on one, which is January. Uh, the month when we call dot month is going to be eight because it starts on zero, right? So zero is January, one is February, two is March, etc. in this scheme here. All right, and we can do the same thing with years. If we say a long time ago dot year, that one's actually going to be the same because years are already uh, zero indexed, apparently. Now, one very useful function that Moment provides us with, which is going to make our first task a lot easier, is if we say a long time ago dot days in month, that actually gives us the exact number of days that are in the month. Okay, so we can see that September, which is what nine is, has 30 days, right? If we were to say, I don't know, let's use a different date here. If we were to say August 12th, 1999, and say dot days in month, we'll see that that gives us 31. If we were to do February, if we were to change this to 02, we would see that that has 28. Okay, so this can be a very handy tool for at least just knowing how many days to expect in our month. Right? There will be certain cases where that will be very helpful, as you'll see. So for the next thing, let's take a look at how to actually manipulate months. You know, let's say that we're working with a moment object and we want to get the day that is, I don't know, five days in the future. Well, how would we do that? The way we would do that is by referring to our moment here a long time ago. And then we can say dot add. And this function takes two arguments. The first one is a number. Okay, which represents the number of units. And the actual unit is the second argument. So we can say five days. And that will actually add five days to this moment. There's also a subtract function that we can use as well. But calling this function actually mutates the moment object. So we'll have to be careful with that as we go through because there's definitely some pitfalls we can run into when, uh, you know, just getting an array of 30 different moments and calling this on them. Okay, and you know, we can obviously do the same thing with months if we wanted to say dot subtract two months. We can see that that works as well, right? That sends us back to July. Now another very useful function that you can call on a moment is called start of. Okay, and we're gonna be using this one as well in our implementation. So we're going to be saying a long time ago dot start of, and the argument that you pass to this is basically just a unit, right? So you can say start of month. And what that will do is it will actually send you to the very first moment, right? The very first instant that is in that month. So you can see that it's, you know, July 1st, zero o'clock, I suppose that would be right. The moment right when it strikes midnight, and the clock is reset to zeros. Okay, so that's how we get the start of the month, right? You might also wanna get the start of the year, which you could do just by saying start of year, which will send us to the very first instant in whatever year our moment is currently on. You can do it with hour, you can do it with second if you want. There's a lot of different things you can do there. So the last thing I wanna look at here is cloning moments. Now. I mentioned that when we call any of these methods on a moment object, it mutates the moment, right? In other words, it causes lasting changes to that. Now, if we don't want that to happen, what we can do is actually call the clone method on the moment object. So if we call a long time ago dot clone, that'll actually give us a different moment object for the exact same instant uh, in, in history, okay? So that can be useful if we want to do operations like add or subtract or start of, and we don't actually want to mutate the original moment, okay? So if we were to say something like const today equals moment, 
All right, that'll automatically give us the exact instant at which this was recorded. When we're working with this, if we want to find out what day is, you know, let's say 15 days after today, we don't actually want to call add 15 days on our today moment, because at that point, it's no longer today, right? So in situations like that, we can just add a clone after the moment that we want to protect. And that'll basically give us the answer we're looking for without changing, you know, whatever the initial moment there was. Okay, so those are pretty much all the relevant functions that we're going to be using with the moment library. There might be a few more that I forgot to mention, but I'll mention those when we get to them. So let's start implementing now our get days in month function that we have here. What this is going to look like, we're going to start off by implementing it the procedural way. So first of all, what we want to do is copy this month moment argument because we don't want to accidentally mutate it, right? Something that's passed as an argument like this, if we were to call month moment dot add two or three days, right? And then we were to call get days in month with some month moment outside of here, that would actually mutate that moment in the rest of our code, which is obviously not what we want. So the first thing we're going to do here is say const month copy equals month moment dot copy. Okay, so that'll make it so that we don't have to, or actually clone that should be. Sorry about that. So that'll make it so that we don't have to actually call month moment dot clone each time we want to get some kind of operation on it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the first day in the month, right? And essentially what we're going to do after that is we're going to loop through all the days in the month till no days are remaining. And we're going to return all of those moments from this function. So first of all, let's set our month copy to the start of the month by saying month copy dot start of month. Okay, which will give us the first day of whatever month this month moment belongs to. And then we're going to create an empty array called days, which is going to contain all of the moments for the month, right? This is going to be the, you know, 30 or 31 element array or 28 or 29 element array that contains all of the day moments for our month. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop, we're going to say while month moment or month copy rather. See, I almost used the original one. While month copy dot month is equal to month moment dot month. Okay, so essentially what we're going to be doing is incrementing the month copy moment one day at a time until we're no longer in the same month that this month moment was in. So what that'll look like, we're going to say days dot push. And we're going to make a copy of our month copy moment and push that onto this days array. Okay, so we'll say month copy dot clone. And then we're going to increment our month copy here by saying month copy dot add one days. Okay, so essentially, we're just looping through all the days in the month, pushing a new moment for each date onto this days array. Okay, and we do have to create a copy here, because otherwise, what would happen is we would get to the end, and we would have an array that contained, you know, 30 or 31 or 28 or 29 different references to the same exact month copy moment. And that's not what we want. So that's why we're cloning it here. All right, so that is our while loop. The last thing we have to do here is say return days, and that's our function. Okay, and the way that we can test this thing is we're just going to import it for now into our app component. All right, so we'll say import get days in month from calendar. We're going to call it here, and we'll just print it out to the console. That'll probably be the easiest way to see it at this point since we're not displaying it in JSX yet. So we'll say const days equals get days in month. And we're going to get all of the days in the current month, which we can get by just calling moment with parentheses after it. 
Oh, and we need to also import moment if we're going to do that. So we'll say import moment from moment. And if we run our application now, we should be able to see the days in the month printed out to the console, which we'll also have to say console.log days. And sure enough, when that opens up, we're going to see that it prints out this array 30 thing. And each of these is a moment object here. So let's just open one of those up to see what it looks like. As you can see that it's got a lot of other properties that we haven't talked about and don't worry too much about those. Really the main thing to worry about here is this thing right here. Okay, so this is the exact date and time that this moment represents. So we see we have September 1st and yours are gonna say something different if you're in a different month than I am, which I'm assuming you will be. Okay, so we have September 1st uh, we're going to have also September 2nd, September 3rd, etc., all the way down to September 30th, which is the last day in the month. Great, so at this point we have a function that will get all of the days in a given month. If you want to see this work for a different month, you can always just say moment.add, and you can see what it would look like four months from now. Okay, if we save that and go back. we can see that that worked as well, right? So January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, all the way down to 31st. Well, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.